What's up, guys? Looks like we are live at this point. It is Wednesday night, the night before Christmas Eve. Hope y'all are well. Looks like William Plunkett is in the house um, and retracted his message already. Hope you guys are having a great night. Hope you're having a great holiday season. I'm going to drink a little beer while we uh, hang out tonight, drinking a Bell's Two-Hearted Ale which is one of my favorite beers, not just because it has a fish on the label, but because it's a delicious American IPA, relatively high alcohol percentage, but super drinkable and delicious. So um, cheers to everybody out there. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a great night or a day or whenever it is that you're watching this, uh, especially if you're watching on the replay. So Looks like William's in here and Justin. What's up, Justin? What's up, William? I was I was a couple minutes late. I created this. Uh, had to bring a few more things down here. Uh, I was actually transporting some of my rods and reels. Um, I was considering making this stream um, about a topic suggestion that Ron Holly had and gave to me recently, but. He, uh, he just informed me he's not going to be able to make it this evening, so we'll just kind of wing it. I've, I've got a package here that finally arrived from none other than Riley Belden, who is also in the house. What's up, Riley? I see you in the chat, so we don't have to really delay much. There's four of y'all in here right now hanging out, and we're going to unbox this package that Riley sent me in the mail. I did just arrive a few days ago, so it took the better part of two weeks or three weeks to get here. The mail has been crazy during COVID and the holiday season, and uh, it just is what it is, but no big deal. I'm excited uh, to show you guys what's in here and uh, talk about what we might do with it, but anyways, um, I'm sorry that I did not post my unboxing video from Discount Tackle just yet. I'm still working on chopping it down and making it uh, watchable for you guys. So what I might do tonight after unboxing what Riley sent me is show you guys uh, right now what it is that I did unbox from Discount Tackle, what I ordered this month, why I'm excited about it, uh, when and where I plan to fish it, uh, that kind of stuff. So looks like we got Darren in here as well. Looks like the chat is kind of popping off and I appreciate that guys. Good to see you all in here. Happy holidays. Justin says, might have to dip out unexpectedly, working the night shift. No problem, Justin. I appreciate you jumping in and hanging out at least for a few minutes. No big deal to anybody who has to uh, to get out of here when you do. I understand. I, I tend to hop on here um, late, especially for those of you who are on the East Coast. So uh, if you've got things to do tomorrow um, and you need to get out of here and go to bed, I understand. No big deal. I'll, I'll try and keep this stream to... Maybe an hour or so. We'll see how it goes. But I appreciate you guys hanging out. Ooh. I already like what I see. Yeah, USPS is a lot slow, William. All right, guys. So right away, awesome bait here straight out of the package. This is the Six Sense Quake 70 lipless crankbait. I'm going to pull this out of the package so you can see it. I've talked about this bait before, and um, and it's an awesome lipless crankbait. Very typical size. I want to say this is the uh, the standard, like, two and a half inch, half ounce size. It's 70 millimeters, so, yeah, closer to two and three quarters, but uh, it's five eighths of an ounce. So, a little bit bigger than a standard size rattle trap, but... As you would expect with Six Sense Lures, you get top-notch components, you get great split rings, triple grip, hooks on these straight out of the pack, you get awesome paint jobs. This one here is called the Chrome Thread Fit, and uh, I quite like it. I'm very tempted to keep it and, um, and not give it away or anything, especially because I like this lure, and I've only got a few of them in my box. I've got one in a, a kind of similar pattern that I want to say is called like Shad Burst or something like that. But um, can't go wrong with 
a thread bin, you know, chromish blue back type of color pattern here. So Riley coming in with the heat. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is an awesome bait and one that I would definitely put to good use, um, especially in the spring and in the fall. Of course, that's when, you know, lipless crankbaits tend to excel. But that said, lipless crankbaits are year round baits do well in uh, in the summer and in the winter, depending on where you live. So um, I just posted on Instagram about a hybrid bait from Rapala that came out earlier this year. It's called the Rap V Blade. And it's a hybrid lipless crankbait and blade bait, which is super unique. So that you might fish in more situations where you're gonna be doing vertical jigging because it has two separate line ties on the top of the bait. But this is a standard lipless crankbait Great profile, great vibration, solid rattle on it. It's just got a, a few or a handful of smaller BBs in here. So it's not going to be the one knocker style. It's not going to be super loud, but it is going to put out a good vibration and some good no, or good noise in the water. What I like is the profile of this thing. Um, it's really tapered, so it's, it's a relatively wide bait. But because it's tapered in the middle um, and it runs nose down, this thing has a great vibration in the water. And um, with those realistic paint schemes, can't go wrong. This is a bait that I really like to work on a yo-yo retrieve. There are other baits that are a little bit uh, lighter weight in nature. Um, you know, like the uh, Bill Lewis Rattle Trap or the Cotton Cordell Super Spot. Those baits are awesome. Even the Strike King Red Eye Shad, I really like for fishing in shallower water. But baits like this, the Quake 70, and a handful of others, I like to fish uh, a little bit more erratically and around grass. So, anyway, I like that bait a lot, and I appreciate it, Riley. Let me catch up on these comments, because I know you guys are popping off, talking to each other. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to keep up with everything. You guys have been saying but justin thank you for asking i have been feeling okay um i'm nearing making a decision about switching careers and um and i'm pretty excited about it so i'll tell you guys more about that a little bit later but in terms of physical health yes everything's been going well i have been feeling quite well and so has my wife she is now uh entering her third trimester of pregnancy we're kind of in the home stretch. You know, she's 28 weeks pregnant now. And uh, as I've told you guys before, the baby is due on March 13th. But if I had to guess, it's going to come at the end of February. So um, she just had a glucose test the other day and um, had the heartbeat checked on and everything. The baby is doing well. She is doing well. Just not sleeping all that great right now because uh, the baby's growing. Baby's active at night and she can't always stay comfortable. But Thank you for asking. Um, hope you're doing well also. How are you feeling, Justin? Also, side note here, I would show you guys a picture on my phone, but I'm streaming live on my phone right now. My five-year-old daughter uh, lost her first official tooth tonight, uh, which is super exciting. She had a strange situation when she was two years old. She had an abscess on uh, one of her front upper teeth and had to have it removed surgically uh, by the dentist. So that doesn't count, but this is the first time in her life that she has had a loose tooth and uh, just gradually got looser and looser over the last two weeks. And tonight I pulled it out. She wouldn't let me tie a string around it or do anything old fashioned, slam the door or you know set the hook on a fishing pole and, and yank it out. But um, I was able to grab onto it, distract her, uh, with a little bit of a story and pull it out with ease. So pretty exciting that she lost her first tooth. Um, I'm going to have to play Tooth Fairy here in about an hour or two, sneak up there, and I'm going to uh, slip a little Susan B. Anthony a, uh, a $1 coin under her pillow. So very exciting times. She is uh, very much believing in all of the, the fantasy so tonight she gets the Tooth Fairy, tomorrow night she gets Santa coming, and, uh, and it's super fun times raising our two daughters who are five and two, almost three. So anyway, 
Thank you very much, William. Yeah, my wife is a champ when it comes to pregnancies. Um, not only does she stay relatively small, so she doesn't get crazy uncomfortable, but she, in the actual birth process, is, I mean, unbelievable. She, uh, she does it all natural, no drugs, no C-section, and um, yeah, I know this is a little TMI, but no ripping either. So um, pretty amazing stuff that most women who hear about um, how she's handled giving birth are like super impressed, and I am too. So we are hoping and praying that this birth goes just as smoothly as the last one. Um, you know, of course, as you go, um, it tends to get quicker. So our first daughter took some 9 or 11 hours uh, to deliver. And our second daughter just took just two, not even three hours. So I'll keep you guys posted here in the next couple months as to uh, development around the pregnancy and the birth. Looks like we've got um, some power bait soft plastics. Riley had told me she was going to send me some of these, and I am pumped. Let's, uh, you know, whatever. Let's, let's just go through them. So first is the Berkeley Powerbait Pit Boss. And this is the 4-inch uh, size. So this is the standard size. I'm going to get my fingers oily and smelling disgusting. Showing you guys these, but, you know, you only live once. So um, we got cool colors. And I'll tell you right now, the, the pit bosses that I have are the old school uh, Berkeley Havoc versions, which don't really have a scent on them. And um, they discontinued those just a year or two ago and moved over to Powerbait. Um, I'm not sure if they make these with Mac scent, but this is the standard Powerbait 4-inch um, pit boss. And this is a killer, killer bait. The color here is just called black blue and it feels a little bit unconventional but I guess it's not um, that that blue flake is just a little bit larger and brighter than what you'd see from a lot of other manufacturers so as you guys know the pit boss is um, a, a flipping bait you, well you may or may not know that but this is a versatile bait because it comes with four appendages and none of them have um, flanges on them so this bait does not kick a lot but it it weighs a fair amount so you can customize this thing by um, removing a few of the appendages if you remove the outside kickers it turns into a very streamlined flipping bait if you remove the inside too this thing turns to a more standard craw where you're going to get more flapping action but I actually like to leave all four on there the vast majority of the time. And what's cool about this bait is you get a lot of ribs on the underside of the bait. You get a solid nose to hold um, the bend of a hook. And then on the top of the bait, right here, it's made with slots to expose your hook or hide the hook. Uh, whether you're using a flipping hook or an EWG. And I really just... I like the design of this bait. Um, it's very versatile. Great on a Texas rig. Great on a wobblehead. Great on a chatter bait. But like I said, great mostly just either on a peg Texas rig or with a flipping weight um, in front of it. And ooh, that is stanky. Um, so like that bait a lot. Darren's got a dip. Got to do yard work in the morning. Is that a tradition for you guys? Or um, or what's the deal, Darren? Either way, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. God bless you as well. Thank you for hanging out. I appreciate it. Yeah, William. Definitely ready for Christmas. Excited about it. I've got a little bit of last minute wrapping to do and uh, playing Santa tomorrow night. I look forward to eating some of the cookies that we're going to leave out. But um, anyway... Next bait is the power bait. I think this is just the standard seven inch power worm. Let's see here. Yeah, so this is actually my go-to 
worm here from Power Bait. They make it in a larger size and a smaller size, but this middle seven inch worm, in my opinion, is the best. Um, it's a, a relatively small profile bait, kind of a skinny worm, and, um, and just a, a standard curly tail worm or uh, tail on there. So I like to rig this with the tail up and Texas rigged on like a three aught, maybe a four aught hook. But you can also throw this thing on just a standard jig head um, on an open hook, you know, ball head or Ned rig style head. And, uh, and this thing will do awesome for you. So I actually don't have any of these in a straight black color, which is what this is. And that can be a sleeper color in a lot of situations, not just in muddy water and low light conditions, but also in clear water. So I'm really excited to have these. Looks like we have one more pack of the same thing, but in the old school motor oil color. Check that out. So I'll pull one of these out. Motor oil um, is something that I don't want to say it's, it's fallen by the wayside because it hasn't. A lot of manufacturers still make this color, but um, in sunny conditions, the color that motor oil puts off in the water, this orange, um, almost translucent color, just, it shines in the water. And um, it's almost like morning dawn and the rage around that color these days where this color just gets them. Um, it's somewhere between a cross of like a standard natural brown and this bright orange which is super cool. So um, again, this is another color that like I don't have a lot of. I typically throw green pumpkin or black and blue or a variation of one of those. And um, so motor oil is an underrated old school color and I love having this. So I hope I'm not glitching. Guys, to those of you who are contributing in the chat, Justin, William, Am I tripping as well, or is it Riley's internet connection? You guys tell me, because it could very well be my internet as well. And if that's the case, um, I'm sorry about that. Justin's been working on his four-wheeler for a while now. It's been like a year-long project. And um, I got to say, Justin, don't sell the thing and, uh, and trade up once you finally finish the project. I feel like you'll feel a sense of satisfaction and um, an accomplishment through working on that project for so long. I know that you posted in your stories on Instagram the other day about what you should do. And in my opinion, you should keep the thing and, uh, and just enjoy it once you're finished with the project. Okay, last plastic in here is the Berkeley Powerbait Max Scent. And this is the Creature Hog. The four inch in green pumpkin. I've actually never thrown the creature hog before, but this bait looks to be a little bit different than the pit boss, but definitely still a flipping bait. And I like that. Um, it's a little bit smaller in profile than the pit boss, even though it's still a four inch bait. The kickers are a little bit longer on it, and they're thicker too. Um, oh, good Lord. Um, I literally only have like a pack or two of Max Scent baits, and, uh, and this scent is disgusting. Um, in a way that I think fish are going to love, and I, it's been proven, especially this year and last year, um, on the pro tours that max scent, especially drop shot baits excel and um, particularly around smallmouth in northern bodies of water but this creature hog looks like an awesome bait for a jig trailer and for a texas rig and on a wobble head and um, pretty much just bottom bouncing presentations and i like it a lot 
Now it doesn't necessarily have the uh, um, that slot to tuck your hook in like the Pit Boss does. So I'm probably more inclined to Texas rig the Pit Boss and throw this as a jig trailer or as a flipping bait and tuck the hook into the bait when flipping it. Um, just leave it inside the bait. This is a relatively soft plastic, especially compared to the Pit Boss. And, um, and I like that. I don't see it as being super durable, but that's not why it was designed. Good Lord. It says the hook to use that they recommend is a Superline EWG hook, but that said, I will still probably use it on a flipping hook. Oh man, I wish I had some hand sanitizer down here. That is disgusting. Woo, yeah you did, Riley. You got me the real stinky stuff. Wow. Um, I'm kind of grossed out, but I think the fish would dig it if they were around right now. Um, all right, looks like we got one more thing in the package. And it's another six cents bait. This is the Curve 55 in a super cool color that is called Craw Bomb. Now the Craw Bomb, or the, I'm not familiar with this color. Whoa. Wicked. Wow, that's cool. Again, I'm uh, I'm tempted to keep this bait just like the Quake 70 and not throw it in a giveaway, but we'll have to talk about that offline, Riley. This is a wicked color, guys. Look at this up close. Look at the sparkle on that back. Look at the translucent red on the side and that orange belly. Dang, that is gonna be a wicked spring craw pattern. Okay, the Curve 55, for those of you who don't know this bait, is a wiggle wart style, small bodied, medium diving crankbait. I might've talked about this on the last stream that I did because I ordered a couple of these off Tackle Warehouse during Black Friday, but um, these baits relative to a wiggle wart have a smaller bill and dive shallower. So these, yeah, I think they claim to dive five to nine feet if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so three eighths of an ounce and they dive five to nine feet, but really it's more that like four to six foot diver so this is a shallow to medium diving crankbait. And uh, that color pattern is wicked. This is like a Christmas bait. I might have to post this on Instagram tomorrow and uh, and show off that, that flake because it is green and red on top. It's, it's tough for you guys to see the green right now because the camera might not be focusing just right. It looks more gold, but there's definitely some green flake in there. And I like that a lot. So it's got a cool rattle compared to other baits like it. I'll show you guys some of the other ones in my box. I have pretty much filled out my medium diving crankbait box as of late and I've, I've reorganized it. So I've got my wiggle warts here and here. I've got my Berkley Dredger 10.5s in here. I've got my Strike King 3XDs here. My uh, Spro Rock Crawlers in here, and then my Norman Middle Ends and my Six Cents Curve 55s. So these are pretty much all of the similar style, small bodied, medium diving crankbaits that I throw. And they'll, they'll all cover kind of that five to 10 foot range comfortably. Um, it's just a matter of how deep you want to get the bait and what sound profile and how tight or wide of a wobble you want to get out of the bait. So the recent additions that I've made for the Six Sense uh, Curve 55 have been this mud bug red color, which is somewhat similar in that it's got a red top, kind of a crawfish pattern, 
orange side and a brighter orange belly. So got some similarities here. Of course, you get the green eye on the mud bug red, and you get a little bit um, darker red out of it on the back, whereas you get a lot of flash out of this craw bomb that you sent me, Riley. So, um, anyway, I also picked up this one that's called, a, I don't know, Muddy Water Craw, something like that. And this is... Uh, reminds me of a couple other colors, one that Six Sense makes and one that um, Strike King makes. But I like a lot of yellow on some of my crankbaits too. And then I picked up the Black Magic color, which is a black and blue crankbait. Which uh, you just don't see very often these days. Primarily black crankbait. Little bit of blue on the underside. And then those blue... Uh, stripes on the side so tough for me to know what to do you know this would probably be like my most common color that I would throw a little bit more natural of a cropish pattern or like a ghosty I think this is called ah, I don't, I'm not familiar enough with the colors that six cents makes but I've got a handful of them in my box and um, this craw bomb color has me wondering, do I give it away or do I keep it? Um, Riley, we can talk about that offline because there are a few other baits that um, are in that category I just talked about that I plan to give away this month. And um, one is the Storm Wiggle Wart in the Phantom Brown, which is one of my favorites. One is the Norman Middle End in the Sour Grape, which is also one of my favorites. Chartreuse Purple Back, a lot of flake on that. And then I was thinking, I might put that Curve 55 Craw Bomb in addition to this Berkeley Flicker Shad in the standard silver color um, that you had sent me. You sent me this like earlier this year and I have a couple in this size and color. This bait's gonna dive a little bit deeper and um, it performs differently, has a tighter action, more shad profile than a crawfish profile or action to it. And um, so I very well might throw that, um, this Curve 55 in there and, um, and make it a stipulation that people follow you as well as me in this giveaway. So uh, let's talk about that offline. If you're interested in doing that, cool. Um, otherwise, I'm definitely going to shout you out. And I appreciate you sending me this package, Riley. That was very generous and awesome of you. I know we had talked about you wanting to throw some stuff in a giveaway, but also having some interest in trading baits. So, um, like we've talked about, there are Kitek baits that I can definitely throw your way. From swim baits to some of these crazy flappers. And, um, and we, we should talk about that and what it is that you want in return. Whether you want me to give some of this stuff away and ask people to follow your page. Or you're just cool with me shouting you out and giving you a little thanks via social media. Um, and send you a package in return to uh, to add to your collection. So thank you very much for sharing. And um, and I appreciate your friendship and your support here. Uh, subscribe and always tuning in to the live streams. It's always fun to have you. Now, um, I think I might have mentioned, but I'm not sure. Let's get back to the medium diving crankbaits. Um, a couple that I had added to my box from my discount tackle unboxing this month. Riley, what are you doing? Guys, 
let me just say, I have never received a super chat. Um, and I know that's kind of silly to say, but I have never once asked for a super chat on YouTube. Um, the only money that I make on YouTube has been through AdSense revenue. That's why you guys uh, see the ads on my videos if you ever watch them or rewatch them. But my goodness, thank you, thank you, thank you, Riley. You definitely did not need to do that. Uh, but I super appreciate it. Thank you for sending the package. Thank you for the two bucks. Very generous of you. And um, I appreciate you. So getting back to the Discount Tackle unboxing from this month. Strike King 3XD is in this box I was talking about of medium diving crankbaits. This guy is going to dive a little bit deeper and be a little bit louder than the other ones. So listen to this. It has a high-pitched knocker to it and like one BB that's free-floating. So the 3XD has a louder sound than most because of that high pitch. BB in there. I'm not going to cry, Justin. I just thought that was really nice of Riley to do that. I appreciate all of you guys in here. So, um, the funk, what up, dude? Remind me one more time. Is your name Frankie? Or did I just totally screw that up? I, I want to be able to remember your guys' names when I don't see them uh, through your screen name. And I asked you last time, but I already forget. My man, Frankie. <laughs> and a dude. I, I remember. All right, Frankie. Good to see you in here. Thanks for hanging out. I just unboxed a package from Riley with some really cool baits in it. And then she threw me a, a $2 super chat for really no reason. And that was... Very generous and nice of her to do so. So this color here, I was kind of referring to it when I showed that muddy water craw color of the 6 cents Curve 55. And this is called Green Tomato. I've talked about this color before, but it's got that yellow belly and red side and back. So um, I like it quite a lot. It's got more of a black back, but red and yellow. Um, almost reminds me of the old Norman or a Bandit color that they called Mistake that was red on one side and yellow on the other. But this green tomato is a color that stands out, especially in colored water. And I've had a lot of success on it in the springtime, especially in the red eye shad. But I decided to get it in a couple of other baits. I'm going to show you one other bait that I got in this color this month. So um, I picked up that 3XD and I picked up a couple of the medium diving uh, Spro uh, Rock Crawlers, okay? This is the Rock Crawler 55. They make the 55, which is this half ounce. Um, it's a little over two inches, so it's slightly bigger than the other baits, you know, in its class, like the Wiggle Wart. Let me just show you these side by side. You can see in terms of the body, the Rock Crawler is a little bit longer but it weighs a little bit more. And, um, and at a half ounce, this thing throws like a mile. So I picked up, listen to how quiet that knocker or rattle is in it. I think that's crucial in some situations to getting more bites, but the standard rock crawler has a long bill on it and, um, and dives pretty damn deep. So you can see the difference in bill size here between the original Rock Crawler 55 and the medium diving Rock Crawler 55. Same body, same weight, same rattle system, but instead of diving in that 9 to 14 foot depth range, this MD version dives 4 to 8 feet. So it's a bait that I don't hear people talking about and one that I am pretty excited to work into my arsenal where it's going to fit right in that same category as the curve 55 from six cents, but not be nearly as loud. That curve 55 has a similar rattle to
to say the wiggle wart, which is pretty loud, but um, yeah, the rock crawler is more subtle, but it's got a really good action and it digs on the bottom. So um, it's made for fishing rocks specifically. And uh, yeah, so I picked up a couple of those in that 3XD as well. And uh, yeah, I picked up some jerk baits. I think three of them in this month's unboxing. Heck yeah, Frankie. Little Frankie. Got some donated lures for Little Frankie's Little Frankie stocking this year. That's super cool. Top water baits for him. Well, he will fall in love with fishing if he hasn't already. If you're getting him top water baits, that is super cool. Hope you guys have a great year fishing together next year. I picked up a little uh, five foot six ultra light rod for my five year old. And uh, I'm hopeful that she will enjoy learning how to cast with a big girl rod, get into a traditional spinning rod this upcoming year. You know, it'll mostly be for bluegill and trout and small bass, but um, it's got a really cool uh, rainbow trout pattern on it, a lot of pink in it. And uh, so I'm excited to give that to her. Yeah, I agree with that, Frankie. Less hangups on top water for sure. So guys, look at this tiny little jerkbait. I posted about this on Instagram a few days ago, but this is the brand new Strike King KVD 100 jerkbait. This is a bite-sized jerkbait, as you can see. It's less than four inches long, and um, it's loud. It's designed just like its big brothers. So I'll show you one of the Strike King KVD 300 jerk baits. I like the 300, it's got three hooks on it. The 200, which is in between, is more like a Lucky Craft Pointer, one, pointer 100. Um, it's got two hooks on it and I just, I don't love it quite as much, but the 300 I like because it's got three hooks on it and it dives a little deeper than most in its class. It dives right in that six to seven foot range which for most baits is like a deep diving jerk bait. Most jerk baits are gonna dive in the three to five foot range, but this new 100 jerk bait is a lightweight, smaller, it's, I haven't weighed it. So it's somewhere between a quarter, closer to a quarter ounce, but don't quote me on that. Uh, this thing dives like two to four feet and is more of a floater than a suspender. So um, it's actually going to do well in skinny, shallow water, um, streams or rivers where you want more of a floating jerkbait type of action. It's going to work where bait is smaller, where bodies of water are more pressured. And, um, and I'm excited about that one. I also picked up uh, a new color, not new on the market, but new for me, of the Spro Mix Stick 110 jerkbait. This is a staple jerkbait in my box. Uh, borderline top five. It's just a, a, a very high quality jerk bait. It's loud. That weight transfer system in it. And uh, as is typical for Spro, it's got sticky sharp gamakatsu hooks that come stock on it. And um, it was designed by jerk bait fisherman Mike McClelland. Very, very good bait. Typical 110 size jerk bait, half ounce, dives in that three to five or four to six foot range. And guys, I hate to do this, especially, you know, some halfway through the stream, but I got to pee already. I'm only halfway into the beer too. I don't know what's going on. So hang tight and I will answer your question, Frankie, about how I fish jerk baits and whether it's in certain seasons or not. Okay. I see your question. I'll be right back.
Sorry about that, guys. The stream cut out for a minute. Leave me a comment if you can see me and if all is well right now. When I just came back, it said that the, the stream had cut out and that there was an error. So, okay. All right, cool. Um, Frankie, you asked a question about jerkbait fishing. Um, how often I fish them and whether I fish them in certain seasons. Um, I fish them... Um, I will fish them year round, but I will say I, I tend to throw them where they excel primarily. So jerk baits tend to do best in cold water. Um, and usually when open water is the coldest it gets. So late fall and early spring are the times where a jerk bait is best because typically speaking, you're going to fish a jerk bait on a slower cadence. Um, you want now jerk baits are made in floaters, sinkers, and suspenders, but most jerk baits on the market suspend um, or are designed to suspend, even if they don't necessarily do that straight out of the pack. You do have to sometimes um, adjust your jerk baits, whether you're changing out the hooks or you're adding suspend dots or suspend strips. Uh, to add weight to the bait to make it suspend properly because there's other factors that play in like the water temperature and the density of the water that will affect um, how that bait reacts in the water. But a jerk bait does best when fished on slack line and on a long cast. So in cold water, you're going to catch fish that are just starting to move up and, and feed more aggressively, but are still a little bit lethargic um, and get can be caught on a reaction style bait or late in the fall as they're starting to become more lethargic. Um, so long cast, reel down um, to get it down to depth. Again, most baits are going to get down in that three to five or four to six foot range. And then on slack, just kind of a, a twitch, twitch and let it sit. Uh, I'm either going to fiddle around with two twitches, three twitches, or one, um, and usually kind of mix it up. So um, I, it's not going to just be always two. You know, I'll probably go two and then let it sit for a few seconds and then one and let it sit and then back to two, let it sit, one, and then maybe three. Um, so I'll fiddle around with it and really try to pay attention to when it is that you get the bite. Um, but again, certain baits, are more um, erratic, are more loud than others. So as you can see, I've got a lot of different jerk baits. These are my um, Rapala X wraps and Rapala rip stops and shadow wraps, my six cents provokes and scro mix sticks, my strike king KBD jerk baits couple of Lucky Craft, um, they're cheaper Lucky Craft baits. And then honestly, I, I hate to admit it, but I've got a whole box full of Japanese jerk baits as well. And this thing is stocked full to the gills as well. So here, these are all Mega Bass jerk baits. Um, these are Jackal, Rearrange, and... Um, and that bait that Justin sent me, what's it called? The, the RV Minnow and a couple of um, lesser known Japanese companies uh, like ISM. I've got the Raver in here. I've got a couple of, uh, these are the Lucky Craft Pointers in the 100 and the 78 size. I've got some Yozuris and um, some dual hardcores. I've got some Imas and then some deep diving Lucky Craft pointers as well. So um, honestly, all of those baits do different things. The, the Mega Bass Vision 110, which is the most expensive bait of all of those that I just mentioned, is kind of the go-to for me and for most anglers across the country 
even though it's a $25 bait, it is essentially the jackhammer chatterbait for jerk baits. Um, it's the most responsive, the most consistent action wise. Well, it, consistent is a relative term. Um, it's pretty erratic and it has a, uh, a medium loud sound. Though I do have a couple in the silent version and um, a couple of the 110 plus ones that go a little bit deeper. But the Vision 110 is like the standard bait that you're going to go to for that four to six foot range. But of course, you can switch it up. Um, if, if you're fishing cold water, that Vision 110 is arguably the best. Now, a couple other sleepers are like that Spro McStick 110 I mentioned and um, the Strike King KVD 300. That's a cheaper bait. Um, the Ima Flit 120 is an awesome bait. Um, I, I throw it in the same situations that I do the Strike King KVD. It dives more in that like six to seven foot range, uh, but is still a standard profile. Doesn't have the long bill, but the Ima Flit has a um, a totally different sound profile to it. And it sounds more like a rattle trap. Listen to all these. So it's got multiple rattle chambers and a ton of small BBs. Can you guys see this? Not sure how well you can see that, but the I'm a flit is a really cool bait that, uh, that dives a little bit deeper and sounds much louder than most on the market, but it's still going to have a pretty tight action to it. Whereas the Lucky Craft Pointer 100 has a little bit wider of an action and it's loud. So if I still want that wide action, but I want um, a little bit quieter of a bait or a smaller profile, the Lucky Craft Pointer 78 is killer it has a very subtle sound to it but that same action that the pointer 100 has in a smaller profile so um anyway i throw jerk baits mostly in the late fall and the early spring but i will throw a floating jerk bait or smaller size jerk bait especially in the summertime um and when fishing for trout a jerk bait is one of my go-to baits riley what are you doing is that another one? <laughs> Riley, stop it. Are you just donating more money? Why are you doing this? You're making me feel guilty, yo. And let me let me scroll back through these comments, but um, I saw somebody say, go Broncos. Was that you, Riley? Frankie says, are jerk baits used mostly from boats or can you use them from the bank too? Um, both. <laughs> so, yes, technically I would say um, people tend to use them more from boats because um, especially during the summertime, you can catch them out deep where uh, smallmouth in particular are suspended. But that said, especially the times that I mentioned in early spring, and in late fall, you're going to find fish that are transitioning to and away from their wintering holes. So you can find them up shallow and especially in that, you know, five to 10 foot range where they're feeding up. So you're going to fish the bait in that shallow to mid depth range. So it's not going to snag up all that frequently because you don't want to make contact with the bottom. This is an open water bait. Um, it's not a deflection type of bait. Although I did see um, a video recently made by Wired to Fish that I thought was fascinating uh, where they talked about fishing deep diving crankbaits in shallow water around wood and rock to make it deflect. 
and act like a kind of standard crankbait, almost like a square bill of crankbait. Um, but I know that's very unconventional. So typically, you're going to fish it in the middle of the water column to target fish that are down below and will come up to eat. So you can catch fish that are in 5 to 10 feet of water um, as they're transitioning to or from their wintering holes. So hope that answers your question. Um, Riley, go Broncos, no doubt. Um, not that we stand a chance to make the playoffs, but um, we've actually done surprisingly well this year, and I'm curious to see where we'll go next year because if I had to guess, we're going to hang on to our quarterback. Drew Locke has done um, a decent job this year, and um, and I could see him getting better and better as he progresses and matures as a quarterback. He's got a little bit of an attitude on him, which I like. He's got some swagger, but um, but he does still make mistakes. And we've had a tough year with injuries and such, especially on the defensive side of the ball, which is where we are most strong. So uh, next year should be a totally different ball game. If our defense can keep us in games, then we won't be playing from behind as much. We'll be able to use the run more, which is one of our strengths on offense. And um, we should be much better. So... I have hopes that we will be around 500 or um, more seriously in contention for the playoffs next year. But if you follow football at all, you'd know that the Kansas City Chiefs have the AFC West locked down for the foreseeable future. Patrick Mahomes is a little bit too much of a beast. And sadly, uh, they're just going to win our division for a long, long time. So we're going to be fighting for a wild card spot. For a long, long time. And uh, it is what it is. Thank you again, Riley, for that $2 super chat. I, that one's from William. Thank you, William, very much. Thank you both. Happy, happy holidays. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I'm not going to cry. Stop it, Justin. But uh, yeah, really appreciate you guys. Well, I love you guys, and I love doing the streams as well. So, guys, check out this bait that I picked up during, uh, this was part of my monthly package at Discount Tackle. And this is a brand new bait for 2020. So was that jerk bait I, I showed you, the KVD 100, that smaller jerk bait. But this one from Strike King was just released this year. And this is the 1.5 square bill in the hard knock version. So... As you can see on the bottom of the bait, it says hard knock. And just like they made the hard knock in the, um, the sexy dog and in the 2.5 wake bait, this hard knock has a side to side loud knocker sound in it. So I picked up two colors. This one is like a watermelon craw. It's a, a translucent green watermelon red type of top. So you can see that red flake in the back. And then it's got this red bottom. Super cool color. William, no problem. Um, don't worry about it. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you hanging out. I appreciate your support. Merry, Merry Christmas to you and your family. And, um, and I'll see you again in the next one, man. Now, this one is that same color I was talking about, also in the hard knock. But this is the green tomato color. So it's got a crawfish pattern on it, but it's yellow on bottom, red on the sides, black on the back. Wicked color, as I said, I've done really well on this color in the springtime on the rattle trap. The standard 1.5 square bill from Strike King is a non-rattling bait. It's a silent square bill. And that's part of why it has done so well over time. Uh, let me see if I can pull one out. So this one here is the 1.5 in Green Gizzard Shad. One of my favorite colors. Very subtle color, a little bit of a green back on there. 
and then like a pearlescent see-through. Um, it, it even shows some hues of purple in the light, but totally silent bait, okay? Now, the 1.5 has also been made in a, a Bass Pro Shop exclusive Rattlin version. So listen to this guy. If I'm not mistaken, that's a different sound. I've got a couple of them in my box, so I can show you um, just what they sound like in comparison. That's the Rattlin 1.5 from Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. And this is the Hard Knock. Rattle, knock. Very different. Can you guys hear the difference? Let me know in the comments. Do you hear the difference there? Rattle, a little bit subdued, more typical crankbait rattle. And this is a hard knock. A real one knocker sound. So, um, you know, these are not the same bait. And like I said, the rattle inversion has been and still is an exclusive made for Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. So the, the hard knock version of the 1.5 square bill is brand new and is totally wide stream. It's available at yeah, pretty much all retailers. I bought mine at Discount Tackle and saved quite a bit of money. Um, I paid less than $6 a bait for them. So if you guys are interested in that bait, I highly recommend you go check it out. Uh, from Discount Tackle. But um, yeah, the, the 2.5 wake bait is so effective. One, because you can fish it fast in the very, very upper portion of the water column, but then that sound is mesmerizing. Uh, it's a lot like a, a walking bait, you know, with a knocker in it. So to throw that sound into a square bill crankbait, which typically speaking, most square bills are going to be silent. And some will have traditional rattles in them, but most of them, almost none of them have a one knocker sound. I've showed you guys before the, uh, the new bait by Lucky Craft, which I picked up earlier this year as well. And this is the Moon Salt series in their 1.5. And this has multiple rattle chambers. I'll try and show you that up close. This one sounds like a rattle trap. So um, very different sound on that guy. And so I think sometimes in those situations where you know a square bill is going to excel, if you've got lay down trees, you've got shallow rocks and you want to bang off of cover and you're in shallow water, you know, you're in two to four feet of water and you want to throw a bait that dives three to five feet, a square bill crankbait in the spring and in the summer, I mean, really almost year round, square bill is killer. And um, so I just like the idea of having the same type of bait in multiple sounds because same profile, I pretty much throw the 1.5 square bill 80% of the time. I will throw the 2.5, maybe 10% of the time. And then I'll throw the 1.0, the small guy, and the larger 4.0 each, maybe another 5% of the time, depending on the situation. So um, anyway, looks like we've got a gentleman, Neil, in the house. What up, dude? Eighty-four, Neil Bone. Who are you calling dad? You just subscribed. You're new here. Must say nicely organized bait room. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for the subscription um, and for the support. Thanks for hanging out in this live stream. We're just hanging out for a little bit tonight. I'm showing you guys a package that I unboxed from Riley, who's in the chat right now. One of my longtime loyal subscribers has now sent me two packages here in 2020 of some lures just out of the goodness of her heart. And um, 
So we've done a little bit of an exchange before, and she's in for a few more baits in return. Going to send her some Kitex swim baits, some other Kitex soft plastics, and uh, maybe a couple chatter baits. We'll have to see what it is that she's actually interested in receiving in return. So anyway, I love to engage with you guys here um, who are interested in hanging out for a bit. So good to have you, Neil. Thank you very much for being a part of the community. Frankie says, in just my opinion, but I can't stand bright ass baits. They don't mimic the local forage at all. It, yep, I understand that. But there is a time and a place to throw bright ass baits. Okay, um, especially when you're anywhere in the, you know, extreme end of the spectrum. If you've got really dirty water, you need something to stand out. Um, so a chartreuse blackback, a chartreuse blueback, something like that green tomato that I showed you, something with some, some orange or chartreuse in it, you know, a lot of fire tiger type of colors do really well in dirty water. Okay, just straight up. It does not do you very good to throw a natural color pattern in dirty water, straight up. Now, there's a middle ground with slightly stained water um, that's got a little bit of color to it. With that, I tend to throw more natural color patterns or ones with some more flash to them. Depends on the forge I'm trying to imitate, but I'm going to go a little bit more natural with that blues, greens, silvers, um, you know, I'm often imitating bluegill, but sometimes also shad um, or minnows. And so it helps to throw something a bit more natural in say average water clarity. Then when you get into clear water, that's where you want to go one way or the other. You can really do damage on like transparent natural color patterns or on very bright baits. And it depends on what kind of fish you are fishing for. So smallmouth bass just have an aggressive nature where they want to kill something, whether it's natural or not. If you throw something bright at them, they have this strange urge to kill it uh, because it's not natural. It, it should not be there in their environment and they can see it from further away. So, you know, it depends, right? Same goes for rattles. You know, if you're an all natural guy, then you ought to throw all silent baits as well. But I'm a believer that uh, lateral line is a big deal. So vibration and sound, and then also, you know, bass are visual feeders. So, you know, the two things complement each other and it depends on the situation that you're in. But I like to have stuff for all situations. And um, again, it's all personal preference, right? So I hear what you're saying, but um, it is what it is. <laughs> Neil, you said, what up, dude? But it auto-corrected to dad. That's hilarious. I'm from Denver, Colorado myself. So I am mostly fishing local reservoirs and lakes here in the Denver metro area. Though I will go north of Denver and south down to Colorado Springs, most of my bodies of water here are relatively small. Um, you know, the bigger bodies of water that I fish are kind of in that, you know, 1,000 to 1,500 acres. So not very big, but I do also fish a lot of urban ponds that are significantly smaller than that. So um, that said, I grew up a fly fisherman myself. There's a uh, trout fishing is probably the most popular style of fishing here in Colorado as a whole. So there's a lot of trout stocking that goes on, but there's a surprisingly decent amount of good bass fishing, walleye fishing, um, even musky fishing, tiger musky. Um, and then, you know, I typically don't fish for catfish, carp, you know, trash fish, if you will. But I do fish for panfish, bluegill and crappie some of the time. But um, I, for the most part, it's bass and trout for me. Um, I grew up a trout fisherman, fly fisherman, and just some five years ago fell in love, head over heels in love with bass fishing. And um, that's kind of been my go-to 
uh, when it comes to just having an hour or two to get away, hit a local spot up and, um, and try and catch a couple fish. So that's my style. I love to play around with different baits, presentations, techniques. I'm, I'm definitely still learning. And in my opinion, I always will be learning. But I like to share the knowledge, share what I'm learning, try and teach you guys a little bit, and, um, and just share my experience in terms of what's working, what's not, what's new, um, kind of all of that. So hope you like what you see. Um, let me know in a comment what it is that you watched or how you found my channel and why you chose to subscribe because I super appreciate it. YouTube has done some weird things in the last couple months and numbers have dipped significantly. I haven't posted standard regular content on my channel for a while. It's pretty much been unboxings, giveaways, and live streams. Um, whereas a year ago and earlier this year, I did a lot more of uh, lure reviews and tips and tricks and um, how to rig certain baits. And those are like my more viewed videos and what got me to where I'm at right now with, you know, 2,300 subscribers. But um, I'm hoping to grow the channel a bit quicker next year. And so I want to know what's working, what's not, what kind of content you guys want to see. Of course, I'll still do live streams like this so that we can hang out, have a good time together. Um, and just shoot the shit when it comes to baits and what I've been up to and uh, answer any questions that you guys have. But I do want to make more standard content that you guys can enjoy um, on a regular basis that you feel will provide value. So for the most part, this is an educational fishing channel. Um, eventually, it might turn into a little bit more entertainment. But I'm still learning, as I said. Um, I'm still relatively new to bass fishing. You will see over the next three to five years, I will progress from mostly a bank fisherman to kayak or, um, you know, a, a float fisherman uh, to maybe a John boat or a, a, a less serious boat and then potentially to a bass boat in the next few years. So, um, yeah, anyway, let me get back to these comments. Neil says, I'm from PA, a lot of clear water near me. I hear you. Frankie says, same here. I think up here in Connecticut as well, it seems to be clear water altogether. Interesting. So you guys, what kind of uh, presentations, baits, rigs are you throwing uh, for the most part, assuming you guys are fishing for bass or do you guys fish for trout? I know that Pennsylvania has some awesome trout fishing. Um, as we do here in Colorado, but tell me what kind of fishermen are you guys and what do you like to throw? Neil says, I watch basically all fishing channels and I watch a lot of live streams. I think because you're live, it recommended you to me. Interesting. So you hadn't seen any of my videos before this live stream. It just popped up in your feed. That's fascinating. There's, there's been more channels streaming live recently than ever. Uh, to be honest with you. So from Alex Rudd to Smallmouth Crush to uh, Bass U to you know, Ike Live and Straycast. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of channels doing live streams as of late. And um, interesting. I'm glad to hear that it popped up in your feed somehow. And that, you know, maybe my stuff is is popping up via the YouTube algorithm. I, I don't seem to have a real grasp on it these days, but that's good to hear. You say I'm mainly bass fish, but I don't mind multi-species. I hear you, and I agree with you too. So, Frankie, what'd you say? Um, whenever you see deep south fishing videos, the water looks like Charlie and the chocolate factory water. Yeah, um, I don't know why that is necessarily, but that's a totally different type of fishing. And... Uh, yeah, you got to know where the fish are positioned. You have to know those bodies of water very, very well. There's a lot less of covering water when you've got super muddy um, conditions like that. So totally different ball game. I, I typically don't watch a lot of Deep South stuff myself, but um, I do like to stay fairly well versed. And I watch a 
pretty wide variety of stuff too. So we could talk about that another time as well in terms of what our favorite YouTube channels are and why. I'd be curious to know that from you guys. And, uh, and again, like I said, what kind of videos you want to see me put out in the future in addition to live streams and unboxings and giveaways. If you didn't already know, Neil, I do monthly giveaways on my Instagram channel. I often uh, post them here on YouTube as well and give you guys the opportunity to enter the giveaway and win too. So um, at the end of every month, I post a new giveaway. And this month, it looks like I'm probably going to do these medium diving small body crankbaits. So like a wiggle wart, a Norman middle end, maybe a six inch curve 55, a Berkeley flicker shad. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to do some unopened baits that are still in the package, but oftentimes what I'll do is grab a little tackle box and fill it up with a half a dozen lures from my boxes. I'm not one of these guys that keeps a lot of hard baits in their package. So up on my wall, you will see that pretty much everything behind me is soft plastics and everything in these boxes are hard baits. Um, so when I get new baits, I put them in my boxes. And I, you know, I like to wrap the hooks to prevent hook rash. So I'll put little, you know, hair ties, um, like for my, my daughters, little tiny, uh, rubber bands around the hooks to prevent them from getting all tangled in the box and scratching each other up. But I don't like to keep a lot of baits in the package, um, just because I'm less likely to fish with them. So, um, Giveaways will vary, but keep a keep an eye out for that stuff. Follow me on Instagram. Um, my handle over there is hooksets dot are free. <clears throat> you got a girl, two kids, full time job, so it's been tough. I hear you, man. Yep. Now same goes for me, man. After Christmas, you're going to be out there every day. Good for you, Neil. I have two children myself. Also work a full time job. And, um, yeah, my wife works usually on weekends, um, at night as a nurse. So I don't have a ton of free time to just get out and fish for, you know, the entire day from sunup to sundown. Like that never happens for me, you know, as a father of two young children, soon to be three, uh, free time is few and far between at this stage of my life. So I, for the last few years have mostly been a fisherman where I get out when I can for a couple hours, whether it's early morning before work, on my lunch break in the middle of the day, or you know, at, at sunset uh, toward the end of the day. Um, and sometimes they even do some night fishing in the summertime. So, you know, I like to mix it up and usually I'm only out for a couple hours at a time trying to catch a few fish. That's about it. I'm not much of a tournament fisherman. I'm not much of a hardcore angler I have not been a long time bass fisherman myself. Um, again, this is like a new hobby and obsession and, uh, and passion of mine. So I just, I love it. I can't get enough of it. And, uh, and I know that a lot of you guys feel the same vibe. So frog in the building. What's up, dude? Yeah, you're right, Frankie. COVID did hurt us bad. Financially only, thank God. Okay, well, good to hear uh, that you're staying safe physically, that none of you guys got sick. Uh, same here in our situation. COVID has hurt my business personally. Um, you know, I'm a recruiter and companies have stopped hiring significantly, you know, especially earlier this year. Um, so it, it's been a weird year for my business and with my mental health, being a bit of an issue between August and October, um, that really took priority and my work took a back seat. So I'm considering a career change and switching over and doing something totally different moving forward. And um, yeah, COVID's been a wild year um, when it comes to just the way that society operates how we treat each other, how we see the world, and um, and how we see what is appropriate and what's not, what we've chosen to prioritize, and um, 
And it's, it's been fascinating to just see how relationship dynamics more than anything have changed this year. Um, I've seen a lot of that personally, uh, especially in my family. So um, I just can't wait for this to all be over. And for some of those relationships that I cherish the most, especially amongst family members that are closest uh, to me, most important to me, that we haven't necessarily seen eye to eye and haven't been able to spend much of any time together this year. Um, I can't wait until that is behind us and we can go back to normal in a sense, um, at least in the way of hugging and loving on each other and spending time indoors and close to each other, enjoying face-to-face -face conversations in close quarters and, uh, and generally just embracing and expressing our love for one another um, in a more typical way, right? I mean, this year has changed that completely. So, sorry to get a little bit off topic. But yeah, Justin, obsession is the right word. No doubt. I think we're all on the same page about that. Riley says, well, hope you all have more time. And yeah, this year we've all suffered in some way. It's made us better people how to deal with stuff like this. I agree. Neil says he gets an hour and a half of daylight after work. That's pretty good, man. What time do you get off work? Dang. Yo, you get off at 3 or 4 o'clock? That's impressive. Riley gets her cast off tomorrow. Woohoo! Congratulations. That's exciting. Um, sucks that you've been wearing a cast for as long as you have the last month or two, really. So uh, hopefully you're all healed up and can get back to normal activity, get back to fishing. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that that's been the case. So, um, and thank you for the well wishes, hoping my business gets better. Again, um, I'm likely to change careers just because I have not found a lot of passion in working completely on my own these past two years. Um, I thought it would not only go better, but that I would feel more fulfillment out of starting my own business um, out of my house, working from home initially, and then growing the business to start um, hiring people to have a team alongside me, people working underneath me, and, um, and just gradually build the business. And it hasn't gone as planned. And um, it's unfortunate, but I also just haven't enjoyed the work itself. And um, it is what it is. Sometimes you got to recognize when things aren't going the way that they should be or the way that you plan for them. you got to have a plan B. And, um, and I'm starting to recognize that more than ever. So there was a, a period of time where my pride got in the way and I was really just pretty laser focused on making it work. Even if I wasn't enjoying the work, even if I wasn't having the success that I expected or wanted to have or that I knew I should have. Um, but it, it's how it goes. BJ Harris in the house, dude. What is up, my man? What up, dude? Cheers. Good to see you in here. Haven't seen you for a while. Really hope that you're doing well. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you and your family, BJ. Neil gets off work at 3.30. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, it's been getting dark, you know, in that 4.30 to 5 o'clock range, uh, at least here in Colorado. I don't know if it's different on the East Coast or what, but, um, you know, I usually don't stop work until somewhere between 5 and 6. So this time of year... I really don't have the opportunity, though our local bodies of water, uh, at least that are not streams or rivers, are pretty much all frozen up at this point. So we are moving into ice fishing season, which for me is ski season. When I'm not fishing in the winter, I am snow skiing. Um, I am a diehard skier, have been my entire life. I grew up fishing at Breckenridge here in Colorado. Um, for the last 10 years or so, I've been skiing at Vail, and I do my best to get out some 10 to 20 days per year. So I'm up there on the weekends um, a lot in the winter, but that said, my wife is six, almost seven months pregnant at this point, and um, so I'm only going to get 
maybe eight or 10 days in this year. I've got three days in already. I'm going to be skiing two days next week. And uh, I've got two in January and two in February planned. But that's pretty much going to be it. Come mid to late February, I'm going to have to cut my ski season short. Um, knowing that my wife is due mid-March, but is likely to give birth in late February. So anyway, uh, just a little tidbit that some of you might not have known about me, that I am a skier um, at heart. You know, I grew up fly fishing and skiing. I also played other sports. I swam competitively. I played tennis um, all through high school, and I, I played club tennis in college. I swam a little bit in college, but um, yeah, I, I love just being outside. I'm an outdoorsman in general, uh, so fishing and skiing are my deal. Frankie looks like he's getting out of here. Have a great night. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year if I don't see you before next week. Um, there's a chance that I'll be on next week, but I don't, I don't even remember what my wife's work schedule is. Um, actually, she works Saturday night. So, guys, there's a chance that I might stream on Saturday the 26th. We're heading up to the mountains to do some skiing um, for Monday and Tuesday. We're going up on Sunday. But Saturday night, I'm going to be free. And there's a decent chance that I might hop on then. So, if you guys are interested, let me know. Um, I could definitely hop on then. But otherwise, I'm going to dip out of here in a couple minutes as well. This has been fun having you guys participate in the chat and um, and wish each other well and for us to just generally have an old school fun night where everybody, it's good vibes. And um, gosh, Riley sending me two super chats tonight. Um, I know one was from William and one was from Riley, but I, I can't believe I got uh, some super chats. That's crazy. BJ Harris. Say I got a nice fishing cove. I don't disagree, man. Um, I, I just barely reorganized this deal a couple weeks ago, adding these shelves, these uh these baskets here. So I can fit more of my stuff in here. For example, in here I've got my top water baits, I've got my frogs. I got my whopper ploppers. I got my toads. So, um, you know, I like to keep my stuff relatively accessible for us to talk about over these live streams. And, um, yeah, it, it's nice to be able to just flip through. I've got my wake baits here. I've got my walking baits here. And, um, yeah, so I've got kind of top water over here. I've got multi-species stuff down here. I've got some soft plastics up here. These are also soft plastics. I've got Ned Worms and Senko style baits, Nico Rig Worms. And then I've got swim baits down here, both hard and soft. Kind of glide baits and wintertime swim baits. Anyway, um, yeah, appreciate the compliment. Yeah, I, I love this fishing cave too. I love coming down here and just looking at baits, thinking about what it is that um, I'm looking forward to using next, what worked well for me recently, what needs to be refilled in my boxes. Um, you know, I do a lot of surfing the web on discount tackle and tackle warehouse, uh, the hookup tackle, bunch of places, just looking at what is new and, um, and what is kind of on my wish list at the moment. As you guys know, I make a monthly purchase from Discount Tackle. That is part of my deal with them. And um, I make a few purchases from Tackle Warehouse, from Six Cents, and uh, even from the Hookup Tackle and some other places uh, throughout the year. So, yeah, the fishing cave is not slowing down in growth. And that's part of why I do these monthly giveaways is just to share the wealth, right? Like I, I have an obsession like a lot of you guys and am trying to, to grow my arsenal and expand my curiosity. And um, yeah, I, at a certain point, I realized that I've got too much and 
you guys deserve to get something every now and again. And I have enough to give back and want to do right by you guys. So it has more about, or it has to do more with, um, with me being generous than me trying to selfishly grow the channel or my Instagram page. Cause to be honest with you, I know how the algorithms work and giveaways are not the best way to grow your page um, or your channel. It's just not. So um, even though you'll see me do that every month, it's not for me. It's for you guys. I'm trying to hook you up. So if you guys didn't already know, I do a larger giveaway with Discount Tackle um, as a joint deal through them every three months. We just had our first one back in November, early November, end of October, where I gave away a brand new reel, um, the Shimano um, MGL uh, Corrado 70 reel. So that's a, a small spool, high quality reel, $230 fishing reel. Um, and there will be something in that range, ballpark two to $300, whether it's a reel or a, uh, a huge pack of baits or a, a big bag or, you know, it'll be high quality fishing equipment and gear and or baits. Um, every three months, I'm going to do that with them. And then every month, just, you know, I give away stuff to, to hook you guys up. Riley, your passion sport was lacrosse. Interesting. You say was lacrosse as in you don't play lacrosse anymore or what? Wait, Riley, I didn't know that there was another package in the mail, um, the giveaway package. I Maybe I missed a comment earlier, but uh, interesting. I did not know that. Um, yeah, send me that tracking number too so I can see where it's at right now. Um that, that kind of gets my mind spinning about other stuff. So I don't want to get too distracted, but thank you very much. Um, I, I had no idea that there were two packages in the mail. So Riley definitely wins a uh, most valuable subscriber tonight. Multiple packages, multiple um, super chats. Uh, just absolutely crazy. Appreciate you. Yeah, Justin, that reel was so sick. I, I wish that I could have won the giveaway uh, with my personal account. I, I, I even asked my guy, jokingly, over at Discount Tackle, can I enter the giveaway? Like, honestly, this is a reel that pretty much exceeds most of what uh, I own quality-wise. There's only one or two reels that I have in my arsenal that are that nice. And, uh, and that's the kind of thing that I would love to have for BFS style fishing. So uh, for throwing light lures, especially. Um, I do have a Daiwa Tatula SV, which for me works awesome as a crankbait reel and for throwing lighter crankbaits and jerkbaits. But, um, but yeah, something like that MGL Corrado 70 would have been sick to have. Now, I usually try to stay in that one to $200 range when it comes to reels, uh, when it comes to bass fishing. I spend a little bit more on my fly fishing stuff just because it's a different ball game and you don't need as many combos to get by. But, um, and it's, it's just a different style of fishing too. Don't say that, Riley. We haven't been worried about BJ. We've been missing him. That's the right way to put it. Uh, we have not been worried about you, BJ, though we do wish you well. Uh, we love having you a part of the community. We hope that you'll, you'll come hang out with us more frequently because it's always good to have this community staying strong and growing. And um, just want you to know that there's, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to be self-conscious of, even though we've all got our own issues, our own faults. We're all struggling with something, uh, but we come here to hang out and just 
hang out, talk fishing. Sometimes it gets real and we talk about other stuff, but, um, you know, I, I want this to be a place that we can all just get away and chill for a little bit. There's one other lure that I wanted to mention from uh, my unboxing this month that's brand new on the market that I didn't already mention. And this is the Z-Man Chatterbait, specifically the cross-eyes Chatterbait. So what they did was take their cross-eyes jig. And I'm not sure if the cross-eyes jig had a vertical line tie on it to start out with or if they switch that over from horizontal to vertical so that they could put the chatterbait blade on there. But what's cool about this bait is that it is really a jig with a blade on it. So where most chatterbaits are a uh, bladed swim jig or like a, you know a swim bait with a blade on the front, they're more like a uh, an aggressive scrounger. This is a jig meant to be fished on bottom for the most part but it's different than like the cfl uh the freedom football head that was put out you know last year this guy has a weed guard on it so that's part of what makes this especially unique is it's got this two strand hard durable weed guard so you can really flex these guys out and put them wherever you want and it's going to make the bait weedless so even if this thing rolls in cover, it's not going to snag up, which is absolutely critical when fishing around wood. Chatterbaits are historically known for being grass fishing baits. Um, that's where they do best is in and around grass or in shallow water. Now, chatterbaits have been evolved over the last handful of years because they've been so successful and discovered to be so versatile so they've started being made in heavier weight models you know the jackhammer chatterbait and some others are now made in three quarter and one and a quarter ounce models to fish out deep like you would a deep diving crankbait so you cast it way out there let it fall all the way down and then fish it along bottom and uh and bang cover however one big issue you're going to have with that technique is snagging up. Um, when you're fishing down low to the bottom and you're not fishing a chatterbait in grass or in shallow open water near cover, if you're, if you're risking it, you know, risk it for the biscuit, you're going to get a chatterbait hung up quite a bit. So one modification that a lot of pros and other people have made to chatterbaits over the last handful of years has been adding weed guards. They've been drilling holes in the top of chatterbaits to add weed guards. Now, there are only a couple of weedless chatterbaits on the market, like straight up. The Project Z weedless is one of them, though it's made for shallow water applications, shallow grass. Um, and it, it has a standard weed guard on it. This guy, this weed guard is a little bit more substantial and um, and it's got this O'Shaughnessy hook on it, but is made to fish in and around cover like you would a jig than a chatterbait. So a couple things that are said on this. This was designed by jig fishing specialist David Walker. So it says it's got an adjustable multi-strand coated wire weed guard for maximum snag resistance a custom 5 aught o'shaughnessy hook offers improved hookup and landing ratios i feel a little bit mixed about that and then it talks about the stainless steel chatter blade the blade to head connection the molded in lead keeper i didn't show you guys the the bait keeper up close but it does have that standard single wire bait keeper on there it does have a so it's got a dual keeper one is lead and one is wire the skirt is hand tied 
and tied via copper wire. So that is one of the, the downfalls of the jackhammer chatterbait. Um, the upside is that it's hand tied. The downside is that it's, it's tied with like a, uh, I don't know, as some type of, uh, you know, braid or a, a fiber and it comes loose pretty easily. So the copper wire on this guy is going to secure the skirt on there quite a bit better. And I like that a lot. That said, I also like the eyes. Some people are going to feel mixed about the paint on the head and the color of the blade. But this blade is like a, uh, you know, black nickel. And this one is a gold blade on this, this color called Waterbug. So it's more of a green pumpkin uh, with watermelon, a little bit of blue flake in there. And um, yeah, awesome color. Both of these are in the half ounce model. So I'm going to fish these kind of in the mid depth range, though I will also fish them in shallow water. And occasionally I might throw them out deep. So you get kind of the, the best of all worlds with the half ounce. You can get it down deep without having to wait forever, like might be the case with a 3 8. You can fish it in shallow water without it getting hung up too frequently. But it's going to excel in, say, that 5 to 10 feet of water where you've got laydowns, brush piles, things like that, where um, a chatterbait that is not fished around grass is going to do really well. So, yeah, pretty pumped about that. The cross eyes chatterbait from Z-Man. It's a new bait on the market and uh, just became available. I did make another purchase from Discount Tackle the other day. Should have that coming in in the next few days. That would be cool if I had it for Saturday to do another live stream and show you guys what I picked up because there are a couple another baits. Uh, one, I've already given you guys a, uh, a teaser on because this size the Z-Man Baby Goat has been available for now the last couple months. But the new sizes of it, the larger goat and the billy goat, just became available on most retailers. So um, the Baby Goat is like a Ned Rig bait, a finesse jig bait, um, a, a finesse chatter bait trailer. But the... Goat is kind of a do everything, like the Menace Grub from Strike King, which you guys have seen me talk about a lot. Um, I throw that bait frequently, and uh, and have a ton of them. Of course, I might do some unnecessary digging to find them here, and I shouldn't right now. But um, I'll show you that I have an entire little box dedicated to the standard size menace grub and i also have some in these boxes that are the baby menace grub and i have some packs over here that are the magnum menace grub uh, and so z-man has just decided to release the same bait in their elastic material all three sizes in the same year so the baby goat became available you know, a month or two ago, and now the goat and the billy goat have been made available just in the last couple weeks. So I picked up um, a pack or two of each of those sizes, in addition to a couple other jerk baits that I've been looking to pick up, and uh, yeah, show you guys that soon. So I'm gonna hop out of here, guys. Justin says he's gotta hop out of here. Well, good timing, man. Me too. God bless you all. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for hanging out tonight. There's eight of you in here. 13 thumbs up. Guys, that is wicked. Good for you guys. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up button, do me that solid real quick before you dip out of here. Um, consider checking on this video tomorrow and leaving a comment after the fact because I would greatly appreciate that. Um, love the support. Thank you so much for hanging out. Hopefully I'll see you guys on Saturday night. If I don't, um, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you and your family. Thank you again to Riley Belden for the package, for the package that's coming in the mail.
for the super chats. And thank you to the rest of you guys for showing up, for hanging out, for supporting the channel, for subscribing, all of the above. Happy holidays. Cheers. Love you guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.